I was trained by Dolores Cannon when I was 19, right? She was, before she passed away, a famous past life regression therapist. God brought me there for a very specific purpose. That was the kickoff of so many things in my life. So he brought me to Jesus, and then he brought me to Dolores. If you haven't heard this story, I found her because I was just walking on the Pearl Street Mall in Boulder one day, and this older woman with long gray hair started chasing after me, saying, I have to talk to you, I have to talk to you. And I was like, who is this crazy lady? And I finally stopped because I realized she's trying to get my attention because at first I didn't think she was talking to me. And she says, I just, I have a word. I have to tell you, like God wants me to tell you something. And at this point, I was very much like wary of things like this. And she was like, you're going to become the most famous student of Dolores Cannon. And I was like, who is that? Like, what? What are you talking about? How crazy are you? Did you just get out of a mental hospital? So she starts telling me who she is, and I was like, I don't know anything about that. Like, the idea of metaphysical anything had never occurred to me. Never knew about it, never heard about it, never looked into it, nothing. My only, I would say, metaphysical experiences would have been just the fact that my eyes were open, so I'd been seeing things. I knew God. I knew that when Jesus came into my life, I was miraculously healed of anxiety attacks that I'd had since I was nine. So I knew that there was the supernatural. But this idea that there was a whole like realm of education on the supernatural was not within my scope of understanding. So she tells me all these things, and then she tells me that she's written a bunch of books. And I was like, okay, well, where can I get these books? And she points, and like by the time she had chased me up the mall, we were right across from the bookstore. And she's like, oh, her books are right in there. So at this point, I'm like, all right, are you just trying to sell me this lady's books? Because she also works at this bookstore. It was called The Lighthouse. So we go into The Lighthouse. I grab some books. And I'm like, all right, whatever. I'll give it a whirl. I never liked reading. I know some people really liked reading. I was not that person. <laughs> I used to basically, not basically, let's be real here, to pass tests. God would just speak the answers to me. I wouldn't really do the homework or read the books. Huh? I know. And this is a true story. When I was in 10th grade, this was like multiple times that this had happened, but in 10th grade, my English teacher, who now is a fan of my podcast and might come on my podcast, which is a whole other thing, but he was convinced I was cheating, but he had tried to figure out how I was cheating, and he actually like brought me into a school judicial meeting because he was just like, how are you doing it? I know you're not reading the books. Like, you don't deserve an A. How are you doing this? <laughs> you don't deserve it. He was so mad. He just wanted me to work as hard as everybody else, and he knew I wasn't reading the books because he would ask me other questions that like theoretically I should know just in conversation, but I would only do well on the tests. But he was writing the tests in a way where there's no way that I could cheat. Like how would I, right? They're just, they were like paragraph writing questions, but that's how my gifting works. I just let, as long as I let God write through me or talk through me, like it's good. I don't have to think about it. So of course my answer to him was not something that he liked. I'm like, I just know the answers. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you here. So Needless to say, when I get to these bookshelves, and these books are ginormous, if anyone's ever grabbed a Dolores Cannon book, we're talking like thousand page books. So I look at how big these are, and I was like, oh, great, I don't want to do this, but I reluctantly grab down some books, and I start reading, and when I go home, I remember reading them and just being like, what? All the time I was like, what? I can't believe it. What? But there was this thing in my belly where I just like knew parts of it were true and I just like couldn't escape it. So I'd be up like all into the night. I read these books the fastest I've ever read anything in my life. And then I was like, all right, well, I have to learn from this woman. I go on her website. This is like 99, like 1999. So I go on her website and she doesn't offer any sort of teaching or training. So at this point, I'm like, well, that's not fair. She told me I was going to be one of her most famous students. Like, I can't even get trained from this woman. 
So I put my name on the mailing list and no joke, like a week later, it's like Dolores is having her first ever QEHHT training. And I was like, that's weird. But there's a whole application process. So in the application, it's all these questions, right? It's very much based on like who you are and what you've done. And at this point, I'm still stubborn Jewish busy who's like, well, if it's really the truth, then I'll get in even if I don't fill this out. <laughs> so I answer only the first question. I said, a woman ran up to me in the street, told me I was going to be your most famous student. So I guess I'll see you in Arkansas. <laughs> I got accepted. Because at this point, I'd read enough of her books to know that she would say that she was divinely guided in what selection she made. So it wasn't like she was just picking at random. So when I went to go train with her, and this is actually something that God brought into my memory over these last few days, there was a girl sitting next to me that worked for John of God. Does everyone know who John of God is? Okay, well, suffice it to say, John is not of God. John is of the devil, okay? John of the devil. Um, I think since he's been arrested for child trafficking, but he ran this big, like, healing practice in Brazil. Obviously, he was healing in the dark arts, not with God. So this woman that was in the training next to me, I think she was originally from Australia, her parents had brought her to John of God early on in her life because she had some sort of terminal illness. And she told us that when he healed her, she took on his healing gifts, okay? So at that point, I think she was only nine when it happened, she then lived there for the rest of her life, working for John of God. And she told us, like, it's just really embarrassing, but sometimes the spirit takes over me and I can't stop it, right? These should have all been red flags, by the way, to me, but I was like, I had no idea what I was doing was the only one in the room that didn't really know what my gifting was. Everyone was like quasi-famous, and I was just like a random 19-year-old. So one of the times we're in the middle of conversation and teaching, and all of a sudden her body starts to shake. I can't even think about it without my chills going down my spine. Her body started to shake, and she started to kind of whistle like a teapot. And then she said that something was working through her to heal this guy next to me. And she was like, do you have liver cancer? And he was like, yes, how did you know that, right? So this just shows these evil spirits can know things, right? And then, but this doesn't mean that it's of God, that it's God's will, right? So this is the first time I watched all this in real life. And I'm like, oh my God, is this like the X-Men? What is happening? <laughs> Meanwhile, I like, I know that I can see things, but I'm not, I'm 19. I'm not like in any way aware or like shaped into a business skill set or anything. I'm just like watching all this in awe. So we get through the whole training and I enjoy every second of it. It all makes sense to me. And ultimately her big thing is that the body isn't meant to be chronically sick and degenerated. And that chronic sickness and degeneration comes from past lives, not being reconciled. These traumatic memories impact who you are and how you express. Okay, that's that part, because I'm going to blow some minds here. Okay, so does that make sense to you? So I think we can all acknowledge here, past lives don't exist, correct? So how could that be the case and past lives don't exist? Let me break it down for you. To understand this, we have to know two things. Number one, what does your DNA hold? I don't know why I called it a GNA. Maybe it's a new thing. It's a whole, God's doing a new thing. GNA, folks. What does your DNA hold? It holds information, right? So your DNA holds bioinformation of generations. Yeah? You see where this is going. You got me. Thank you, Deontay. Thank you. Some people, and this is why not everyone can be regressed. Some people can be regressed and gain access to the experiences, not that were their past lives, but information that is held on their DNA. So, did that happen to somebody who shares many bloodlines back DNA with you? Yes. 
but that wasn't you. It's held in your bio information. That's one piece of it, okay? The other piece of it is this. Some people that have their prophetic ability, right, their eyes are open, they have the God-given ability to transcend time and space to go forward, backward, right? We know that the prophets of the Old Testament went forward in time to bring the word back to allow people to follow God's word, right? They took that from the future. They see visions in the future to put it in God's word in the present. So we know that the prophetic allows you to time travel, right? When you are walking in the prophetic, you are no longer time bound. I've heard Christians say, yeah, well, they only went into the future. I'm sorry, what are words of knowledge then? Prophetic words of knowledge, that's God speaking to you knowledge of the past so that you get that person's attention. So you're like, all right, you see, I see you. God shown me who you are. Now listen up because I'm about to tell you your future. God does know the past. God does give us the prophetic ability to see the past. So remember that when Christians will bring that into your awareness. That's not biblical. The prophetic works in both directions.